Did you know that employees can transfer their public holidays? Some of us may know about this and others may not have experienced it at all, but these laws actually allow an employee to move the public holiday from one day to another by agreement with their employer. Like all things in employment law, though, this area of law comes with its parameters. So what are you waiting for? Let's dive straight into this episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Lawlands. My name is Sanam and thank you so much for tuning in today. Well, we have another segment today, which is Unpack the Holidays Act. It's been a while since I've done the last one and I really wanted to focus on transferring public holidays. I know last year I did my episodes on otherwise working days and company close downs, but This is a really interesting one because I didn't touch on transferring public holidays. It is definitely one that does come up from time to time. Personally, for me, though, I didn't see it come up too often when I was working in private practice and even in the advisory space as well. But what I want to know is, are employers not using this because they don't understand this part of the legislation and the employees don't understand it either? Or is it just so common practice that everyone does it without needing advice? I would say that it's the first side because it does get really complicated when you start looking at employees that do shift work. But we'll get into all of that. Before we do, though, you know what time it is. It's time for Laughs with Lawlands, where I give you a dry joke in these episodes. Do not walk behind me, for I may not lead. Do not walk ahead of me, for I may not follow. Do not walk beside me either. Just just pretty much leave me alone. It's a bit of a different one today, but I thought it was really good when I saw it because sometimes you just don't want to be the one to lead. You don't want to be the one to follow. You just want to be left alone. (laughs) And if there's a coworker or somebody that you do need to just slide that message onto, then feel free, have at it. You can send it wherever it needs to go, but use with caution. (laughs) Now, Getting into this episode, it is a really interesting one because, like I mentioned, transferring public holidays, it's just not a common thing, I feel. I personally haven't seen a lot of people ask. And when I was in the advisory space, we would get any question under the sun, from parental leave to ACC overlapping with annual leave. This has never come up for me, really. I've obviously seen the parts of the legislation, I know about it, but it isn't something where I've heavily advised on it that I can remember. But before we fully get into it, I just wanted to say, everyone, please like, subscribe, follow. So let's talk about transfers, because the first thing in terms of a transfer is the automatic transfers that come up. I know these don't get spoken about much, but I thought I would just cover this and clear this off. And it's to do with some days automatically just transferring on their own. You may have noticed, for example, Christmas has been coming up on weekends recently, (laughs) which has not been ideal for, for a lot of employers. But Christmas has been coming up on weekends. If Christmas fell on a Saturday, then according to the legislation, it automatically gets moved to a Monday for some people depending on what day is their otherwise working day. So the calendar date might fall on the Saturday, but the date that the holiday is actually observed for that particular person is the Monday. And this is all spelled out in section 45 and 45A of the Holidays Act. So those two sections basically detail that if a public holiday, such as Christmas, New Year, Waitangi Day, and even Anzac Day, can automatically transfer, So what this usually means is that if, for example, you were meant to work Monday to Friday and Anzac Day fell on a Saturday, then the public holiday for you would be moved to the Monday. So it's that whole idea of Mondayization and Tuesdayization. So that is the automatic transfer, which is done deal, super easy, happens, we've learned from it, we've been dealing with Saturday and Sunday work and public holidays. So this is where we're experts, I'm sure. (laughs) But what happens when an employee wants to actually transfer the whole of the public holiday or part of the public holiday? Let's get into transferring the whole public holiday first. This is all under Section 44B of the Holidays Act, and there are certain criteria and requirements that need to be met. The first one 
always is critical, as we know. An agreement needs to be in writing. Doesn't necessarily have to mean that the employment agreement states transferring the whole public holiday and what's required under that. It could be an agreement made separately, so that's perfectly fine as well. But it's really important that it is an agreement that is agreed to in good faith by the employer and the employee. So both parties have to come to the table here. For transferring the whole public holiday, we are looking for a 24-hour period or another calendar day for the public holiday. So what we're looking at is another day, a whole day, a 24-hour day or a calendar day that this can be shifted to. You need to also make sure that you are clear about what is being transferred. So identify very clearly the public holiday that is moving. You need to identify where this is going. So if this is going to the 3rd of March on a Wednesday, I don't know, (laughs) then it needs to be very clear that it is going to happen on that particular day. The day should also be an otherwise working day for the employee. You can't have it not being a day that the employee would normally work. Otherwise, they wouldn't even get the public holiday in the first place. If the public holiday isn't applicable, then this wouldn't work. You cannot transfer, if you just logically think about it outside of the legislation, You shouldn't be transferring a public holiday. For example, let's say the employee works Monday to Friday, the public holiday falls on a Friday and you say to the employee, yep, I'm more than happy for you to transfer it to the Saturday. How is that fair? They would never normally come in to work on a Saturday, so they'd get the day off anyways. In that case, it has to be an otherwise working day. The day should also be a calendar day or something that is a 24-hour period, which is identifiable in terms of the public holiday. The other thing to keep in mind is that you can't transfer to another public holiday. So don't think that, for example, we're missing Easter Monday and then that's going to transfer over to Anzac Day. And with some critical requirements. So we've gone through some of those requirements, but I would say the critical requirements and the trickiest one is to make sure that the employer, especially, that you don't make the transfer to avoid public holiday entitlements or public holiday pay, meaning that you don't change the employee's days around because you're trying to avoid essentially paying time and a half or a day in lieu. I'll get into a lot more detail as to how these scenarios can come up and what the transfers will actually look like. But in terms of the requirement, just make sure that any movement you're doing, it's not to disadvantage the employee or it's not to try and avoid giving the employee their full rights and their full entitlements under the law. The next requirement as well, I would say to keep an eye out for is the public holiday days and circumstances still apply even on a transfer day. So let's say they've transferred to another completely random day for, for them. Only if they work on that random day that's their otherwise working day, then they need to get paid time and a half and a day in lieu for that particular day. So keep that in mind. You can also have multiple days that are being transferred, but the threshold is that you should not allow a reduction of the total number of public holidays that the employee is entitled to. So if they're entitled to a particular public holiday, the transfer shouldn't mean that they don't actually get the public holiday. So those are the requirements for transferring the whole of the day. A lot easier. It's a situation where if you're looking at a Monday, okay, Monday is a public holiday. What day do you want me to transfer it to? Okay, you want it on this day. We've identified the day. We've made sure that we've set out the parameters around that day. And the employer is fully aware that they're not disadvantaging the employee in any ways to bring them below the minimum entitlements. Those are the key criteria. Well, the next part is where it gets a lot trickier. It's transferring part of the public holiday. This is where a scenario can come up where the employee works across two days, for example, and one of their shifts ends or starts on the public holiday. I'll use my partner's workplace as an example because it's the best one to use. The way that the factory staff work is that they start at either a 3 a.m. shift finishing at 3 p.m. or they start at a 3 p.m. shift finishing at 3 a.m. So they just rotate the shift workers that way. What happens though in this situation, let's say that we've got the public holiday on the Monday but the employee starts at 3 p.m. on Sunday. That means that they're going to finish work at 3 a.m. on Monday, right? And Monday's the public holiday. But then that also means that as per their roster, as per their shift requirements, they then need to come back in on the Monday at 3 p.m. to do their shift to finish the next day, which would be Tuesday at 3 a.m. 
I hope you guys are all following along with me because this is going to be a lot of days <laughs> and a lot of 3 a.m.s and 3 p.m.s. But hopefully that makes sense to you. You've got people starting work on a not a public holiday, finishing work on a public holiday, and then restarting their shift back up on the public holiday, and then finishing their shift the next day, which is not a public holiday. So that's how it's working in these particular scenarios. So section 44A is what sets out the criteria when we're looking at part of the public holiday. The first thing that comes up, again, is that you need to have an agreement in writing. Again, it can be a clause in the employment agreement, or it could be something that's made separate to that. In this case, regardless of how many hours the employee works on the public holiday, they are still entitled to a full paid day off on the transferred day. In terms of what a day means, again, it's a 24-hour period that begins or ends on the actual public holiday. And that 24-hour period, which is the public holiday, it must also include the entire shift that the employee was meant to work. How do we dissect that based on what the law says? Based on what Section 44A says, how do we break that all apart? Technically, the 3 p.m. shift on Monday is at the beginning of the shift falling on the public holiday. So the employee could transfer that particular shift, meaning they don't get paid time and a half or a day in lieu for working the public holiday because they are now going to get a day transferred. They're going to get a whole day off for them. It's a bit complicated, I know, when I'm talking about it and there's nothing visual, but hopefully me talking through it and then now me bringing up a case will help because I think the critical question is, as an employer, what are my employer rights? What can I do? And the Flowers and Allied Investment case from 2018 really laid everything out. So this was a case which was exactly the scenario about shift workers and which of the public holiday is considered as being transferred was a bit confusing in this case. So the first thing is that you need to make sure that any transfers that you're doing are compliant under Section 44 of the Holidays Act. I always hammer into the fact that communication is key when it comes to employment law. And it's because I see so many things go wrong when the communication is flawed. Just like with any relationship, right? This case was a clear example of that, that you need to make sure that your policies are clear and they do not conflict with anything else. In this particular case, Mr. Flowers was provided with an employment agreement that had a clause in there, and that clause then linked to the Holidays Act. But when the authority member sat down and had a look and tried to follow the link, it ended up not working. Then you turn to, okay, do they have any other policies in place that maybe the employee could rely on? Allied Investments leave policy conflicted with the employment agreement. So you had a, a clause in the employment agreement to set out that transfers could be done and how they could be done, but then relied on a dud link going to the Holidays Act and then conflicted with the leave policy. So you can see how this can get really tricky when the communication isn't clear. And this is where I would say, please make sure that you've got it clearly laid out. So the authority member pointed out information that employers should know when they are trying to do these transfers. One was that you need to, again, identify the part of the public holiday that is being treated as a public holiday and the part that's not. So for example, in my example, for the workers that are working from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. as part of their shift, that is not treated as part of the public holiday. So we clearly need to outline that in any agreement. The next thing is to identify the period of 24 hours that is to be treated as a holiday. And then you need to identify which public holiday is to be transferred and the 24 hours that it's going to be transferred to. The problem was in this particular case that nothing was clearly laid out to the employee. It was just a clause in the agreement that was relied on. And the clause in the agreement didn't give enough information. It needs to meet all of those requirements under the Holidays Act. So under that section 44, it's a box ticking exercise. You need to get all of those down. You can also choose to have an agreement which allows the employees not to transfer. So that's another thing to keep in mind, employers. You can have an agreement or some sort of policy in place. As long as you've got it clear and you've consulted with the employees, you can have it very clearly laid out. 
that we will not be giving you the ability to transfer your public holidays. That is absolutely fine and well within your right. If you're seeing this crop up and it's causing a lot of confusion, employees are saying, no, I was meant to be paid, this isn't very clear, and you just want to put a stop to it, consult your employees with the draft policy, implement the policy, and then that's done. You never have to worry about it again. Now, the same rules, keep in mind, apply for public holidays as they do any other time. So just because it's a transfer day doesn't mean that the rules change. And the reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of questions that can come up around this is, oh, the employee is saying that they're, they're sick. Do they get the public holiday? The employee is on annual leave and it just so happened that this transfer day falls on this time. Do they get annual leave? And the answer is no, they always will get the public holiday if the public holiday falls on that specific day. So now the last bit that I wanted to talk about was why would you want to do a transfer for the public holiday? And if you remember all the way to the beginning of this episode, I did mention something along the lines of how difficult and how complicated it can be when the law clearly outlines and says that an employer cannot try to disadvantage or be a bit sneaky and try to make sure that they get some sort of benefit out of this in the sense of not paying time and a half or a day in lieu and just saying, hey, instead of working on this day, do you want to just move it to another day? So there are lots of reasons why the transfer can happen. For an employer, it's a little bit trickier. I would say to approach it as more of an operational requirement. For example, you might say that Friday is your busiest day in your business. People are pumping things out. It's a very busy day. You're trying to get things done. And it just so happens that the public holiday falls on the Friday. And you would normally close on a public holiday because you don't like to stay open. It's just normal practice. One, you don't want to be paying anyone time and a half and a day in lieu. And two, because the business can afford that. It can afford to stay closed. Now, because Friday is your busiest day, you might not want to disrupt the week and you're still going to end up closing your business. So you could look at moving it to a Monday, for example, and saying to all of your employees, hey, I'm thinking about moving this particular public holiday to the Monday. How do you feel about that? Or it could be a date of your choosing, but we just need to speak about it and we need to come to some sort of agreement. If you don't come to an agreement, then the day goes ahead as per usual and you'll just need to close on that Friday and then that's it. See here, it's not a disadvantage to the employee. The employee still will get the paid day off. They weren't expecting to come in and get time and a half and a day in lieu because you don't normally open anyways on a public holiday, but you thought, hey, it is our busiest day. Let's just churn out work and let's just observe that public holiday or transfer it to a different day. So that's how an employer would use it. And that's how I would see it coming up. But you can see that wouldn't be a common scenario. It would be quite rare. But hopefully that's getting your mind kind of ticking and you're thinking, OK, maybe there are ways that I can do this in my business because I want you to walk away from this knowing that this is an option. A lot of employees might not want a particular public holiday and they might want the day off for something else, which is my next point. There's a lot of different reasons when it comes to an employee. But the one thing that I can think of is that with cultural differences that we have, some employees might not necessarily want a, a particular day off. They might not want Christmas off. They might want instead to have another day off. Maybe they would like Eid off. So you can see how transferring can be quite beneficial and that way they can actually have that day off and just confirm in writing with you by agreement that they will not work on that day. Well, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was really useful. Like I said, it's not a common one. I haven't heard too much about it, but it can come up from time to time. Definitely share it with your friends, your colleagues. And remember, don't forget, please subscribe, follow and keep tuning in every week with Lawlands. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a lovely day, night, morning, evening, and I will catch you in the next one. 